Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Nick Zolovich, part of the team at Cherokee Media Group and Auto Remarketing. In today's webinar, SMS Marketing 101 for Auto Dealers. We have a great session in store brought to you by Podio. But just a couple of quick notes before we get started. We are recording today's session, so keep watch of your inbox for a message containing a link to that recording. You will be in listen-only mode for our session, but you can ask questions using the chat function here on Zoom, and we'll get to as many as we can during our time together. All right then, so let's get right to our session featuring Podium's Mark Hansen and Isaiah Rendorio. Gentlemen, take it away. Awesome, thanks for that introduction. Let me just go ahead and quickly share my screen. You can see that all right? Yep. All righty then. All right, well, hello everybody. Hope you all are doing well today. Mark and I are super stoked to be here and we have tons of content around SMS marketing that I know you'll find pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Isaiah Rendorio. I'm the product marketing manager here at Podium. And this is Mark Hansen, my colleague. He's the senior director of field marketing. Uh, before we dive into this presentation, I just wanna take a moment to open up with a pretty interesting question. For many of you who are doing email marketing today, when was the last time you got a 98% open rate on a marketing email? Now, I think chances are that it was probably never. And for the most part, this is a sentiment that rings true for the majority of local auto dealers that we work with. And it's something that we constantly hear in our conversations in the field. The reality is, while email marketing can be a highly effective engagement tool, it's not something as pervasive like our mobile devices, which are typically you know, living at arm's reach, whether that be in our pockets, our purses, or even our backpacks. And yet something as new as SMS marketing can still be daunting to us marketers and local business leaders. And that's why in this webinar, we're gonna be talking about how do you conduct SMS marketing correctly so that you can effectively leverage this channel to increase customer lifetime value and drive more revenue. One more thing before we get in there, let's just quickly go over the agenda. Today, here's a pretty packed schedule. So what we're gonna do is start with a quick comparison around the merits of text versus email marketing. From there, we're gonna talk about everything you'll need to know about compliance. How do you build your opt-in list? The do's and don'ts of SMS marketing. And then we'll finish off with some best practices and some Q&A. All right, I'll pass it over to you, Mark. Yeah. Let's dig into it. So we've all been in a meeting that could have been an email, right? Uh, if we look at the next slide, uh, these days, really, we've all received an email that could have been a text. And that's what we want to talk about today. Text is really the fastest way from point A to B. And if we break it down, though, SMS marketing or short message service, text marketing, is the practice of using text messages to you know, convert your leads and keep your customers engaged. As a general rule of thumb, um, you know, messages in, a, in text marketing are generally around 160 characters or less. And there are really multiple ways that you can utilize text as a channel. But today we really wanna focus on the promotional side of it, using text messaging to communicate things like promotional sales, right? Updates to uh, new business hours or service updates, and then events to your customer base. How do we drive more sales? Um, and convert more leads through this type of channel, right? Okay, if we look at the next slide here, really let's let's take a look at some other channels, right? So if we take a look at email by the numbers, um, on average, email as a marketing channel gets like an 18% open rate, right? And typically around a 2.6 average click-through rate. I've ran email marketing for several years and ran teams running that, that type of channel. And it's true, the rates are often terrible. You can have a large subscriber list. And first thing I do typically in the morning is delete, 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 delete. I look at my email and I delete all the junk. And, you know, think about how much time you, or maybe as a marketer or a dealership owner, you're spending and, and time you're spending on promotional emails, right? For what? What kind of return are we getting? Okay, let's look at the next uh, channel. If we look at direct mail, 
by the numbers, right? It's still, direct mail is a widely used channel for a lot of industries, but particularly automotive. Consumers get sales offers in, in the mail every day. According to the Direct Marketing Association though, the average open rate is about 42% and the response rate is often below 2%. And that's, that's not great. Think about how much time you or your team are spending and how much money you, you might be spending on those, those types of promotions. Outside of really building a brand connection, what kind of return are you getting from direct mail, right? Okay, this might be my next, uh, the next slide is like my favorite slide of all time. Uh, in contrast, let's look at text by the numbers. So text messaging gets an average of like a 98% open rate, right? 95% of texts get open with like within like three minutes. And texts get a 209% higher response rate than phone, email, even Facebook Messenger. Pretty crazy. And then if you're running coupons, coupons or discounts and deals, right? Promotional offers, the coupon redemption rate is like 10 times higher than uh, other types of coupons. So SMS marketing is, as a channel is an incredible channel to leverage in your marketing mix to drive sales. Really, really important. The other thing that, that, that's interesting to look at if we look at the next slide is SMS or text marketing is also one of the most cost of effective uh, marketing campaigns you can run as a dealership. If you're looking at the data here, right, compared to digital advertising, maybe paid social type of advertising, SMS campaigns are extremely low cost to run. This allows you really to drive new leads and increase your customer lifetime value in a very scalable way at very little cost, right? And like email, right, SMS marketing is trackable. It provides you the, the valuable insights into your customer base um, and behavior, kind of like open rates when you think about reporting and things like that, unsubscribe rates. You're able to get all that in incredible data to then build segments off and um, test and optimize this channel. But unlike email, right, it reaches your customers exactly where they want to be reached, which is instantly. People text, right? They spend all day texting their friends and family. And they want to, you know, we have a lot of data here that says that um, consumers want to communicate with businesses in a similar way. Short, on-demand, quick, right? Easy to access and very communicative. It's a two-way conversation. And that's what we want to engage with our customers with. Let's look at how... Uh, text is being utilized, though, Isaiah, uh, in the industry right now. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so thank you, Mark. And while the numbers that Mark just shared, you know, they're, they're, they're realistic here, but astonishingly, we find that text is still an underutilized channel of marketing with only about 12% of local businesses who are actually using text to market to their customers today. If you take a peek here at this graph here in front of you, Old school channels like print and email, they still take that majority share. And that's because that's because businesses today, they are largely still using the same channels that they were in 2005. And that can really be sent across a large variety of industries. It's the way that it's always been and it's what they know. But texting really reaches customers where they wanna be reached. We recently published a study earlier this year, and our data showed that text messaging is actually preferred by consumers two times more over other forms of communication. So just imagine the implications uh, for a dealership who chooses to adopt and integrate texting as part of their marketing mix. It can really provide these dealers with a competitive edge, right? And just to take a moment to double down on this point, Consumer expectations are changing rapidly. Today's modern consumer expects convenience, speed, personalization, and human-like connection. And when you have companies like Netflix, Uber, DoorDash, Hulu, and others disrupting almost every other industry, you know, convenience is king. And ultimately, that means texting. In fact, we find that 65% of consumers think texting makes working with a local business more convenient. So now if we put the pieces together, what does this mean for your business and other dealerships alike? Well, if we put it very succinctly, it means driving more business through text. It means more subscribers, more appointments, and of course, more sales. All right, Mark, passing to you to go over some compliance. Yeah, let's talk about compliance. This is, this is critical and we're gonna uh, probably hammer this home. Uh, all the way through the webinar talking about compliance and opt-ins. But uh, this is often an area where, uh, you know, businesses are hesitant to get started because they don't quite understand it, right? So we look at the next slide. 
um, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Um, before getting started with text marketing, we should be aware of a few things, right? So text is more intimate and possibly even more invasive than other forms of communication, right? With the business, text messages appear directly on a person's phone, whether they're at home or work, asleep on a date, spending time with family. And because of this, you know, businesses and marketers, they have an obligation to use messaging uh, ethically, which means following applicable rules and regulations and complying with those regulations is really in your best interest. That's going to help and, and following maybe common sense best practices. That's going to keep you and your customers happy. So let's talk about the TCPA. If we look at the next slide, what is the TCPA? In the US, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act was put in place really to protect customers from uh, spam, including unwanted calls and texts, right? And in other countries, uh, they really have other similar protections in place, kind of like Australia has the Australia Spam Act in Canada, Canada's uh, CASELs, Canada's anti-spam law, right? These laws require organizations to collect what's called express written consent, right? And that's really important that you have a platform that helps you collect that uh, you express written consent and you have a process for that before uh, you need that written consent before sending out your promotional text messages, right? And a text message is considered promotional marketing or advertising in nature if it's for the purpose of advertising the availability of your service uh, or products and encouraging people to make a purchase, right? Um, so that that is an important distinction. Let's look at the next slide on the difference because there are a lot of dealerships. Not all text messages are promotional. A lot of dealerships are using text messaging on the transactional side, right? And so, um, you know, that's considered maybe one-to-one -one messaging with a customer for the operational or transactional use cases. So that might, examples might be an appointment reminder for a test drive, right? Um, maybe that's collecting a Google review, like you see on your screen here, after a sale or service, um, maybe it's gathering in internal NPS survey feedback after an appointment, right? Um, so a couple of examples, maybe uh, from my personal life, right? I bought a car recently and going through that dealership process, I went to their website, uh, opened up their little chat tool on their, their website, which then converted to a text feed. We booked an appointment. A lot of dialogue happened over uh, different options all over text. That is a one-to-one -one communication. It's not a mass marketing. It's not going out to a thousand people at once. That is a one-to-one -one communication that's considered transactional. And after we made that purchase, my wife and I, we received a text message to uh, leave a Google review, right? So come, came back around full circle. In contrast, uh, two years ago, bought a truck. I still get my, my truck serviced at that dealership. Right. And uh, occasionally they'll do promotions. Right. They'll send out uh, a couple months ago. I got a text promotion that said, hey, Mark, you're about due for another oil change. We're offering 10 percent off this weekend if you book now. Right. That probably went out to lots of people. Right. 700 people or more. And me included. I took advantage of that. But that is a promotional message. Right. So, again, when we get back to you. Uh, transactional messages, those are considered to have implied consent and they're not considered promotional. That's because your customers interacted with you for the purpose of doing business. And really, if you, you don't need express written consent for that, but you should probably um, make sure you ask customers it's okay to text or if they're giving you their phone number, they're okay with that. Check with your team's, uh, your company's legal team before you're you know proceeding to make sure you're in full compliance as you're rolling out a platform like that. Let's take a look at some myths uh, if we're going to get started with SMS marketing. Yeah, Isaiah. Totally. So, you know, again, SMS marketing is a pretty new channel in marketing. And because of this, I find that there, you know, are a bunch of common misconceptions. And hopefully with this section, we can kind of clear those up. And the first one is being SMS marketing always gets businesses in trouble. And that's false, right? The next one being, SMS marketing laws are too complicated to understand. Again, that's false. And then lastly, here we have SMS marketing is spam and that too is also false. The fact of the matter is, and what Mark was saying, SMS marketing in a compliant way all boils down to being transparent and only messaging those people who have given you permission to market to them over text, right? And look, spamming your customers is not just poor practice, but it can also carry some repercussions. 
When you do this in a non-compliant way, sending SMS marketing campaigns without that consent can actually damage customer relationships and trust, and it can also lead to fines. So that's why it's so important to take advantage of an SMS marketing tool that equips you with the tools to quickly and effectively grow that opt-in list, as well as manage those opt-outs when people choose to unsubscribe. And I'll touch more upon that in just a bit, but let's go ahead and talk about some more compliance best practices, Mark. Yeah, so using this type of channel, right? Here's a couple of pro tips, best practices, and we're gonna do a deep dive on some of these areas, but uh, gathering opt-ins, right? How do you build your subscriber list, right? You wanna gather those opt-ins across natural touch points in your customer journey, right? That's really important. The other thing is, again, make sure you have proper consent for each recipient of your message, right? You need that documented and some sort of way to collect those opt-ins and manage those. Uh, a platform will help like Podium. Um, you want to mention your dealership's name. Your customer could be subscribed to multiple other newsletters, right? Or other SMS campaigns from other industries even. You want to make sure you have limited branding. You want to make sure you mention your dealership's name. You want to alert them about possible messaging fees. Mention the frequency of your messaging, right? Sometimes you could be sending weekly, monthly messages. I think you should help your customer be aware when they opt in. And then include an option to easily opt out of all future texts. That's critical. Um, and then make sure you honor those opt-outs. Okay, let's talk about growing your subscriber list, Isaiah. Yeah, totally. So let's just take a moment to circle back around on how do you actually grow that text marketable list of subscribers. I think the many businesses that you know I speak to, they assume that growing that initial opt-in list you know, is the, a hard part of SMS marketing. But in reality, it really doesn't have to be. You know, again, there are a number of touch points along your customer journey where collecting that opt-in is natural and even expected. And fortunately here at Podium, we actually offer businesses the largest variety of opt-in entry points so that you can grow that opt-in list, you know, wherever you interact with your customers, whether that be, you know, at your dealerships themselves, or maybe it's online or some sort of combination of the two. And it all starts when a customer lands on your website and opt-in can be collected when they interact. If you have some sort of web chat messenger, after they transact with you, after they leave a review. And of course, there are other things you can do as well, like setting up customizable online signup forms, which can be distributed you know, via a link or a QR code. You can also share those links uh, to that signup page on your social media or by email blasting your mailing list. And now let's say at your physical dealerships, there are also ways to collect there. Perhaps you have those signup forms open on a tablet or a laptop. I know a lot of auto dealers today who already have these opt-ins collected, whether that be you know, in their service agreement or purchase agreement, they you know, put a little tab that says, by agreeing to this, you, know, you agree to receive messages, promotional messages over text. And with a tool like Podium, it's very simple to migrate those contacts uh, via a CSV upload. All right. Now back to you, Mark. Let's go ahead and talk about some do's and don'ts. Yeah. So we talked about uh, compliance and we busted some myths, right? Let's talk about how to be effective, right? So as a local business, you want to use SMS marketing to engage new customers, increase your customer lifetime value, and then drive more revenue. That's the important piece. What you don't want to do is annoy your customers or damage your brand, right? And the real goal is to give your text the feel and value of like one-to-one -one interactions, even though it's going out in a mass marketing sense, right? This is the powerful thing about SMS marketing that's maybe different than other channels is it's, it's marketing that gets a response. It, it spawns a two-way dialogue, right? And we'll show you some examples about that. That's the powerful thing that SMS marketing then allows you to do. And there's a couple of do's and don'ts, right, to keep in, in mind as we go through this. So let's look at the first one. Um, <clears throat> do use conversational language, right? Um, so one of the biggest turnoffs with uh, marketing messages that businesses uh, often uh, sound like they're shouting, buy now, offer ends today, kind of obnoxious, right? To appeal to your customers, you really want to keep messages lighthearted, short, and conversational, just like they're talking to the, their friends or family, right? Um, so a good example on the screen here, we're looking at, hey, Scott, it's Mike down at Cypress Auto. 
We have some new inventory we think uh, you might like, and it's on sale. Check it out here. It's got a link to go check out that in inventory and it will likely uh, spawn a response, right? So you can even include emojis to keep the conversation uh, personal, informal, short, and, and uh, you know, in email marketing. I've seen people use emojis in email marketing. Not recommended. It's it's not a wise choice. A lot of times those emojis don't translate through, um, but in text it works very well. Highly recommended there. All right, so let's look at the next two. All right, so do address your customers by name, right? Just because it's not one to one, and it could be going out to seven hundred people, doesn't mean it shouldn't sound like it, right? So there are ways to um, plug in. And, and maybe you're integrating with a CRM, right? Or maybe you're leveraging just like a platform like Podium where you have tags and, and data within the system to plug in personalization. The name is really important. Use your messaging system, right? To address each customer by name. And then remember that personalization is crucial. And we're gonna talk about a couple of different ways you can leverage personalization, but you see the example on your screen here, they're calling out someone by their name. And oftentimes you can kind of like load in, hey, it's, it's Mike from X business as well, right? Like you can throw in uh, levels of personalization to uh, create a two-way dialogue. That's really what you're looking for. Cool, the next do. Do send during business hours, right? Uh, if your customer receives a promo at like 4 a.m. their time, they're not gonna be happy. I mean, who knows, depending on the industry they work in, they, they could be up, right? But like, you're not gonna see, uh, they're not gonna be happy and you're going to see a lot of stop replies, unsubscribes, that kind of stuff. So you wanna keep in mind, sending texts during hours that are regularly working and, and regularly awake to respect their privacy and then increase that human-like feel, right? Um, there, we have plenty of customers. You want a platform that allows you to test and optimize uh, not only frequency, but then send times, right? Especially if you have multiple locations and different time zones. Um, it's important to be able to kind of test a small market, gauge your response, and then uh, you know optimize from there. We have some customers at Podium that uh, run SMS marketing campaigns that find that they're highly effective on the weekends, right? So Fridays, Saturdays, midday, uh, they tend to get a really great response, right? That's when people might be uh, on their phones and maybe not working uh, as intensely. Um, test and optimize, right? For your business, what makes sense for you? The other thing to note is um, if you're running a sales promotion with a deadline or an event, right? Um, those are gonna be most effective when you have last minute impulses, right? So let's say you have a sales event coming up or some sort of like charity event that, that's happening with your business, right? You could think about sending a text the week before, a day before and the day of, right? And that would probably drive a lot of uh, great attendance that way, just getting taking advantage of like the hockey stick effect of timing, last minute impulses, right? All right, so let's look at the next one, the next do. Um, do keep your messages simple, right? So remember that you you only have like 160 characters or less to work with, right? And you don't want to use any complex, uh, complex messaging that, it, that could be misinterpreted. And if you're sharing information about uh, an event or promotion, include the date so they, the audience has all the relevant information they need. But you can see on the screen here, again, you do not have a lot of characters. You do not have a lot of branding to work with. Keep it simple. So keep it super clear what you're asking them to do. Super uh, short, simple. You don't want to write multiple paragraphs over text. No one's going to read that. And uh, you, you want to just get to the point and let it be a two-way dialogue. Cool. All right. Let's look at the next one, Isaiah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next thing you're going to want to remember, and just as a rule of thumb, is that successful campaigns are really those that provide very relevant value to a specific target audience. So you're going to want to make sure you're taking the time to really understand who that audience is so that you can ensure that your messages are going to resonate. So just as a point of comparison, while you don't want to send a 20-year-old college student a promotion for brand new Lexuses, rather, it might be more appropriate to send them a promotion about some deals on your pre-owned inventory. See what I mean there? And then moving on to the next one. Our next best practice, this involves to make sure to include some sort of call to action or a CTA. And a CTA is really a method to drive a very certain type of behavior. And in my opinion, if you miss the CTA, 
you're kind of missing the point of SMS marketing. Your messages should include a CTA such as, you know, schedule a test drive today or shop our inventory online or even reply back with any questions, right? And then next, here we have, this is all about including a link in your message. This one is extremely important because including a link actually provides a method for SMS marketing tools to track engagement. So with Podium, when a recipient clicks on a link, our system is actually able to capture and measure exactly how many people have interacted with that message and who have responded with that message and things like that. But just keep in mind though, that you're gonna wanna make sure that your links don't eat up that valuable character count so you're going to want to make sure you have a system that will automatically shorten and brand those links for you, all right? And then moving on to the next one, this is going to be all about responding in a timely manner. So it's important to remember that successful SMS marketing goes way beyond just the one-way blast, right? Customers crave human conversations. So the more you know, personal and human feel your communications can carry, the more effective they're going to be. So just as a point of comparison, messages that are responded to, you know, seven, 10 hours later, that doesn't sound like it's coming from a human, right? It sounds like it's coming from a bot. Whereas two-way messages done well and responded in a timely manner, that feels like a real conversation. And that's going to really improve your chances of conversion. And just to really round out this portion, you're also definitely going to want to keep an eye on how your campaigns are performing and monitoring how your audience is responding to your messages. If you aren't seeing the engagement that you're looking for in the first few promotions, perhaps you're gonna to have to take a step back and experiment with how you are targeting those messages, what language you're using in those messages, what promotions you are running, and of course, at what times of the day you are sending those messages out. Like all marketing, SMS marketing is really about testing and refining what works best with your audiences. All right, Mark, let's go over to uh, the don'ts. Yeah, speaking of texting uh, or testing, right? Don't send too frequently, right? So if we look at um, this, this don't slide here, uh, I mentioned it before, but sending at a high frequency multiple times a day, multiple times a week, is really going to uh, lead to a lot of frustration and, and unsubscribes, stop replies, right? You want a platform that will let you test and optimize that frequency. My suggestion is probably something more like, um, you know, once a week, uh, maybe twice a month, uh, and and only communicating things that provide value, right? Uh, you can you can set up a nurture, right, and and be able to kind of drip content, drip sales events, that kind of stuff. To when they're ready to buy, they're thinking of of your dealership next, right? Without sending something every day or every hour that will get obnoxious, and you're going to see a lot of unsubscribes. So um, keep that in mind. And then uh, obviously this has a lot to do with the value and content that that you provide, um, but you want to be able to test uh, your frequency. Um, let's look at the next don't. All right, so don't use sling. What up, fam? We got hella fire deals right now, right? That certainly increases the uh, casual feel, but it risks unprofessionalism and misunderstandings with your customers. Um, there's really this could be perceived as spammy if uh, you know there's no recognition of the brand, no one that it's coming from, no branded link or CTA, right? Avoid wordplay or anything that can be misleading. You're going to see a lot of unsubscribes if you if you're using Sling that way. Um, let's look at the next don't. <clears throat> Okay, so don't use all caps. This is one of my favorite examples. It's a real life example. It's a screenshot that we found um, for the New York City 911 department, right? They rolled out text messaging for victims that uh, they might be victims of a crime and they can't actually call in that scenario. It's actually a brilliant solution for 911. Uh, but as you see on the screen here, the conversation, someone actually just wanted to test if it even works and only to find out that the New York City uh, 911 department uh, replied in all caps they shout right and uh and towards the end they're like why are you screaming um this is of course is a real life example unless your customers like being shouted at i would not recommend uh, all caps uh, in that scenario um and it, you know it's it's very it can be misinterpreted in a lot of different ways so don't use all caps 
Cool. Let's look at the next don't. <clears throat> don't forget to identify yourself. Want discounts? Just click this very unsettling uh, link, spam.virus.com, right? Uh, that is definitely going to lead to a lot of unsubscribes. So you want to remember to include the name of your dealership, perhaps include the name of, of someone on your marketing team or one of the reps, right? To make sure that it's personalized and the links that you're sending um, are branded. Identify yourself because you don't have a lot of like email channels and other types of digital advertising channels. You have opportunities to brand, right? And so there's a logo in involved. They know who it's coming from. In a text marketing scenario, you have limited characters, you are mixed in with personal friends and family messages, and they could be also subscribed to other newsletters. Identify yourself is really, really important. Um, and, and just because you're going to send probably multiple messages over the course of time, you want to think about the creative ways to like identify yourself with each successive message. So you, it might be, Hey, this is Valley auto. And the next time it's, we're so glad you, you loved your service at Valley auto. And then you've got uh, additional value to provide, but identify yourself is really important. Cool. Let's look at the next one. I'm, and now I mentioned we were going to hammer this home. Really, really important that if you're using a channel like this, you're not ignoring opt-in and opt-out rules, right? Uh, in compliance is going to undermine and trust and really damage your reputation. And that's the opposite of what you're looking for. Remember, you, you can only message customers who have expressly uh, opted in to your SMS newsletter or that channel and make sure to respect their decisions if they opt out, right? Because you want strong relationships and happy customers messaging in a compliant way is really in your best interest. That's really, really important. All right, let's look at the next don't. <clears throat> don't sound like a mass text, right? Greetings, valued customer, want deals or specials, right? That doesn't feel personal. That feels like a mass text. Um, so your, your messages we mentioned could be going out to 700 people. We have some dealerships sending out to 2,000 people at a time. It shouldn't sound like it's it's it should sound like it's one to one, even though it's going out to a lot of people. So let's let's talk about personalization because there's a lot of creative ways to do this. So how do you avoid sounding like a mass text, right? Today's consumers, they crave personalization in all their brand interactions. It's why we love Netflix. Netflix knows who we are and recommends the next show we should watch. Amazon does the same thing, right? They, you know, your customers, they want to feel like a real person is reaching out to them um, and only them, right? So if you want your threads to feel like individual interactions, it's critical to make those text marketing messages as personal as possible. And, and we have many customers that are integrating with a CRM database, right? Or you can leverage just a Podium as a standalone solution. A lot of people will upload a spreadsheet with tags, birthdays, things like the last uh, purchase or service, right? You wanna include name, of course. What about location? Uh, you know, you, you probably don't wanna be sending deals for uh, your Dallas location if you're, you know, the people of the, of the message are in Phoenix or something like that, right? So you want to make sure that uh, you're personalized as much as possible, creating segments in your system, right? To be able to, to message them. But think about seasons or holidays or think about the last time they had a service or the last purchase they made, previous feedback. That's gonna be a powerful kind of VIP list. The people that gave, went out of their way to give you a positive Google review, right? Someone who uh, went out of their way to, to give you positive uh, NPS survey feedback, right? What about their website journey? Things that they clicked on? All those ways are ways that you can market like a human and have a real segmented personalized list, right? And, and take advantage of, of a system like Podium to do that. Let's talk a little bit about what good looks like, Isaiah, maybe some examples of other customers. Totally. Yeah, so moving on to this next section, let's go ahead and talk about like some examples of what good SMS marketing campaigns looks like. Just to kind of preempt this section, in reality, there are countless of SMS marketing use cases that we see being used every day. But for this presentation, we're just going to focus on three use case examples uh, that I found to be a perfect fit for auto dealers, especially in today's you know landscape. So let's go ahead and dive into that. The first one, we have your back in stock notification. Again, this is something that I see a lot of our auto dealers use today. Of course, it's been extremely challenging for many dealerships to procure new inventory, you know, given the supply chain challenges. 
this type of promotion is a great way to let your customers know, you know that they have certain models back in stock. And what I love about this particular message is that they're applying those best practices that Mark just shared, right? They're greeting them by name. They're identifying themselves and their business. And most importantly, they're including a CTA with a link so that they can track that engagement and remove friction within that buying process. And then on a similar vein, I think this is even more common than the previous one, but here we have the buyback campaign or promotions that let customers know that if you are interested, that your dealership is interested in purchasing their current vehicle, right? Again, this is a widely used promotion and we've seen a, a ton of customers see great success purchasing uh, pre-owned vehicles, right? And then finally, here we have our standard holiday promotion, which are deals associated with a particular holiday, whether that be your 4th of July sale, your end of the year sale, Memorial Day, President's Day. You know, there's so many holidays that really make sense in the auto dealership space. Um, typically, these are times where, of course, there are more foot traffic in your stores as well as more website visitors online, right? So again, these are just a few use cases that, are, that I'm sharing with you, but we're also seeing some of our customers use SMS marketing for other creative ways like offering service discounts, refinancing promotions, or even just you know, maintenance inquiries when somebody's due for their next oil change. And then before I pass it back to Mark, I'm just gonna take a moment here to spotlight a success, a success story of how one of our customers are using Podium campaigns today. This here is Moss Family Automotive. They are an auto dealer in the Tampa Bay area. I believe they have seven locations. And they've been using campaigns now for about a month and have already seen you know, tons of success. And just to give you some context here, this company leveraged our campaigns tool to drive car sales during the last week of the month. In total, they sent out two campaigns reaching 3,000 subscribers. And when you look at the outcomes of those efforts, not only were they able to hit their monthly sales quota, but they were actually able to achieve a return on investment for campaigns. And again, this is really a great ROI story that effectively illustrates how powerful SMS marketing can be. And if you just peek down below, you can actually see uh, what Devin Stotts, their general manager said, which is we got a good response. At the end of the day, we were able to sell eight more cars off that note within a 48 hour window. And we bought a couple cars too. Campaigns essentially paid for itself. Pretty powerful, pretty powerful and, and exciting to see maybe how quickly they collected those opt-ins and mm -hmm. built like 5,000 people on a subscriber list is nothing to sneeze at, right? Like mm -hmm. that, that's pretty great that they were able to do that through other touch points in other, the, the rest of the journey, right? The buying journey they collected through review collection, included a button, hey, subscribe for future offers type of thing. Really powerful to then be able to set these types of campaigns up in a very short window, right? Cool. Well, let's look at uh, these last few slides here. The one thing I would mention is that text marketing is not as uncommon as you might think, right? It's starting to become a, a pretty active channel and is one of those things that is going to help your dealership stay ahead and stay competitive, right? I mentioned the example of my service center that will text me uh, great uh, offers for uh, you know returning for an oil change or something like that. Um, Isaiah mentioned the buyback campaign, and I took advantage of that uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. I, it was actually a, a multi-channel campaign that was cool to see. It was, um, we had a 2015 Honda Pilot, um, it's getting old, and uh, it, was, it was kind of the last year of that model. I, I got from one particular um, business and a direct mail piece, several phone calls, an email, and a text campaign, all saying they wanted to buy back my um, my car for, for higher than what we owed on it at the time, right? And that was pretty powerful. And guess what? I took advantage of it. I sold that car to them and, uh, and the rest is history. Another example is it just in even other industries. Uh, my local carpet, uh, carpet cleaner did a holiday promotion offering like four rooms uh, carpet clean and then one free. 
I took advantage of it, right? I probably wouldn't have paid attention to that if it came in the mail or over email, um, but because it came through text, I was, I was taking advantage of it and it was kind of cut through the clutter and, and I was able to, um, you know, speak with my wife and use that offer. Um, so again, not all SMS marketing uh, tools are made equally. We've talked a lot about the differences with Podium and the, the widest variety of uh, opt-in points that we offer. Podium campaigns is really built for auto dealers and local businesses really to be able to build and manage their, their opt-in list, use targeted offers to engage their customers via messaging, and then report on those efforts, right? Um, the campaign solution is made for local SMS marketing, providing exactly what you need to simply build, send, and report on uh, that promotional activity. And then it maximizes all those opt-in opportunities we talked about, allowing pretty much every customer interaction you have to be an on-ramp uh, to grow an engaged and compliant subscriber list, right? Cool. So if you're not familiar with uh, the Podium solution, if we look at the next slide here, the campaigns tool works beautifully with the entire platform, right? So Podium allows you to power conversations, customer conversations that convert again and again, conveniently from a single inbox. And it's built to improve every stage of your customer life cycle so you can engage with the right customer through the right channel at the right time, right? Pretty powerful stuff. Again, all of this is to help local businesses help your dealerships get ahead, stay ahead and compete with others, right? Um, and then really this enables these businesses to start more conversations with customers searching for their services when you think about reviews, right? Um, conveniently convert those conversations into new appointments and even transact through payments, mobile payments. We have a lot of customers um, that will take deposits just through text to pay, right? Or pay for service, right? They'll, they'll activate that channel when you get an oil change, you just pay right there and grab your car and you're gone, right? All through text to pay. Um, finally, it allows businesses to retain and grow that brand loyalty, gather valuable customer insights, and then build public advocates on places like Google reviews and, and other, other um, review sites. Cool. So if we look at this final slide here, Podium today works with over 100,000 small and multi-location businesses around the globe. We reach one in three cell phone users in the US, which is incredible. And we're helping dealerships like yours to win more revenue and market share, to compete with a modern and on-demand customer experience, and finally improve uh, speed and efficiency. So you, taking a look at this screen here, you can see some of the brands that we work with today. We'd love for your dealership to be one of those as, as well. If we look at this final slide uh, before I pass it over to Nick for Q&A, um, if you'd like to learn more about uh, SMS marketing and maybe some best practices we've talked about, uh, go ahead and go to the bit.ly on your screen. This is bit.ly slash SMS dash guide. And uh, you can read all these tips and tricks and even more and customer examples as well as far as getting started. So back over to you, Nick, uh, for Q&A. Excellent presentation, gentlemen. So, so much great information and, and anecdotes uh, about the power of, of text messaging and, and what it can do uh, for a dealership. And if you have any questions for our, <clears throat> our experts from Podium, uh, just use the chat function uh, here and we'll get to uh, those questions. And a couple couple to, to get us started, gentlemen, uh, revisiting some of, of what you shared during during the presentation. And, and Mark, we'll, we'll begin with you. Uh, as you referenced, a lot of dealerships already have an email database uh, in, their, in their portfolio of, of customer relationship tools. Uh, can they just leverage that into an SMS marketing uh, message campaign? Uh, is that advised? And if so, how, how would you go about it? No, they cannot. Right. That's the short answer. So, so we get this question a lot from from, uh, you know, businesses and they, they say, hey, I've got a newsletter, a subscriber list. Right. I've got a CRM and we've got you know, people that have opted in to do emails. We have their phone numbers already. Can we just start texting them? The reality is no. Right. Like um, they need again, we talked about uh, compliance and TCPA. They need to specifically opt into that channel, just like they did with email. They opted in to receive an email. And when they receive an email, they can choose to unsubscribe or not. It's the same way with SMS marketing, but it's separate. They're separate channels, right? So um, 
you know, a lot of customers will include kind of opt-in language in the buying process, right? In some of the paperwork, a lot of uh, customers will also leverage their email channel and they'll include like a button in that email channel to say, hey, for future offers, subscribe here, plug in your phone number. You see that often with retailers and on Instagram, right? You'll be scrolling Instagram, you click an ad. The first thing you see is, hey, for 20% off, plug in your phone number and, uh, and uh, you'll, you'll receive that discount, right? Very similar strategies. And again, we talked about there's multiple touch points through the buying journey that you can collect opt-ins, but the, the short answer is no, you can't use your email list to automatically start texting. Use your email list to collect those opt-ins and then you'll, you'll be able to take advantage of that. Excellent. Excellent. Wise strategy recommendation there. Uh, Isaiah, br bring you back into the conversation along those same lines. If uh, a customer opts out of a, a campaign message, uh, what does that do to the potential to, to have an ongoing campaign using the, the Podium tool? Yeah. So kind of going back to what we were saying earlier, that, that there's that difference between transactional, you know, messages that are one-to-one -one used to help facilitate, you know, business with individual customers. But then there's also those promotional messages, which are those one-to-many message blasts, right? With Podium, you could do both, right? And manage both of those types of conversations. We hear oftentimes, it's like, well, what if somebody says, you know, they to remove them from the promotional marketing list? Does that affect any transactional messages from occurring? You know, here at Podium, we do something a little bit differently in that when somebody receives a promotional text, we encourage them, if they want to get off of that list, to respond with remove. And remove is a keyword that's not tracked by carriers. If they were to leave something like stop or opt out, that would actually remove them from all trans all transactional, all promotional messages. You wouldn't even be able to contact that business again. But because we encourage them to use remove, they're still able to facilitate other conversations on the Podium platform. Hopefully that was clear. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, closing moments here on, on our session, SMS Marketing 101 for auto dealerships with our two experts from Podium, Isaiah Rendorio and Mark Hansen. And, and gentlemen, to, to round us out, we'll, we'll continue with you, Isaiah, and then and then Mark will, will have the final words. Uh, any recommendations as far as what, what campaigns to, to run nowadays? You, you referenced yeah. that the supply chain issues that's impacting totally. vehicle inventory. Uh, yeah. Just any, any closing thoughts or recommendations to, to round this out? As Isaiah, we'll go back to you and then and yeah. work to round this out. Totally. I think that's probably even like one of the more bigger questions that we get is what, what do we, how do we figure out what to run? You know, a lot of, a lot of people who run these auto dealerships, you know, you know, have some marketing expertise, but not are always, you know, up to date on what are the current marketing trends. And so we're fortunate enough that we work with a ton of auto dealers. And what we've been doing in the past few months is build out a template gallery of some of the most commonly and most uh, proven uh, use cases that we see auto dealerships use today. So those three examples that I shared today, those come straight from customers like you, um, who are using the platforms to market their business. So there's template galleries. Of course, there are a bunch of best practices guides that we've published. And we also have an uh, educational YouTube series, uh, which you can check on the Podium channel that kind of goes over some more best practices for text message campaigns. Very nice. Mark, to, to finish <clears throat> us out. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Isaiah mentioned that the templates are really the most exciting thing that we, we're seeing right now because it's, it's pooling the best practices uh, across the, the industry and, and shared customers and, and providing recommendations so that if, if you're using Podium as a platform, you can get up and running in 15 minutes and send out your first campaign, right? Um, the other thing I was mentioning is, you know, not all campaigns always have to be driving a sale, right? Like you could... Uh, think about content as another way to nurture. Maybe, maybe you have a segment of people that you're kind of aware that they're not ready to buy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you could, you, if you have a blog and you're writing best practices, right? Maybe you're trying to have tips around your custom shop or something like that, that you could share content over text, right? And clickable links that they can go um, access. Or maybe you're trying to grow your Facebook page, right? Like there's a lot of different ways to use SMS channels. Um, and that's maybe the fun part about you get to be creative, right? Uh, I'm running those types of campaigns. So 
Very nice. Again, that's Mark Hansen and Isaiah Rendorio, two experts from Podium for our webinar, SMS Marketing 101 for Auto Dealerships. Gentlemen, thank you again for, for such a great presentation and, and a wide array of recommendations to, to help all sorts of dealerships. Thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of all of us at Cherokee Media Group, we thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to having you again next time.